We need to focus. Only murders in the building. Only murders in the building. Welcome to Only Murders in the Building, a true crime podcast. I woke up at the beginning of September 2021 to a flurry of messages and emails from our team. Steve Martin, my childhood hero, is a fan of our show. He's also promoting his new project in which he, Selena Gomez and Martin Short play true crime podcasters. This doesn't make sense. Where do we start? At the very beginning. Now hold on, I thought. Did Steve Martin just steal our podcast? All right. No, he didn't. But the story is true. There's, there's a podcast I listen to. I, I won't mention, maybe I should mention the name. I don't know. It's, sure. it's Australian. It's called Case File. And I love it. I'm Mike. I'm a sound producer and composer for Case File True Crime Podcast and our Case File Presents shows. And no, making YouTube videos that get 70 views is not my main job. But when Steve Martin was doing promo interviews for Only Murders in a Building, he said that our True Crime Podcast Case File was his favorite. And you know, at first we thought it was a bit. It was something that his PR agents told him to say to Liu podcast fans. But he kept repeating it in many interviews um, and he said like he listened to this many episodes which roughly matched our catalog at the time so we finally believed it. Not only does he listen, he made a TV series about true crime podcasters. And well, there was nothing else to do but to start watching. What is Only Murders in a Building? It's a mystery crime comedy series developed by Steve Martin and John Hoffman, starring Steve Martin, Martin Short and Selena Gomez as the main trio. Uh, but we often get well-known actors and celebrities appearing too. You've got Paul Rudd, Amy Schumer, Meryl Streep, Sting, Matthew Broderick and many, many more. Uh, Only Murders have been nominated for Emmys and Golden Globe and as of recording this video, season four just wrapped up, but the series has already been renewed for a fifth season. No release date, but I hope they stick to the schedule and we'll get it next year. But what makes the show so appealing? Well, first we need to look at crime and in particular the strange genre of true crime, which I've been working in for nearly 10 years now. So true crime is a subgenre that examines real crime cases and it's all about the facts, the timeline of events, the clues, the investigation and real people involved, and the police, the culprits and of course the victims. We get books like Anne Rules The Stranger Beside Me about serial killer Ted Bundy, magazines like the first true crime publication True Detective published in 19 24, a TV series like the latest Monsters from Netflix about the Menendez case, movies with Fincher's 2007 Zodiac being the prime example, and you know, of course, podcasts. But humans' fascination with crime didn't start in the 20th century. I would argue that people were always fascinated by uh, the subject. We may not have true crime books by ancient philosophers, but we can look at mythologies from Greece, Rome, and um, or the Norsemen. These are stories, yeah, but I'm sure they're based on things that really happened and they're uh, full of murders and other crime adjacent activities. Uh, so Focalis tragedies like Oedipus Rex deal with crime and drama too, even, even if it's made up. And you know, people attended things like gladiator fights in ancient Rome or public hangings in medieval times for fun, so it's not just more than audiences that are drawn to the macabre. But if we look at the actual start of true crime as a genre with authors and publications, well, it started as soon as printing press became available. And according to the bloody history of the true crime genre, as soon as normal people started to read in about 16th century, particularly British authors started to sell short books and pamphlets about real crimes, uh, investigations and trials. Town leaders and priests reported horrible local crimes to teach a moral lesson about the limits of God's mercy. So you know, 
it started early. Crime reports morphed into sensationalized stories, narratives, and even ballads. And at the same time, it branched out into detective fiction with you know, Sherlock Holmes as one of the most famous characters. And as culture developed and literacy rates grew, the true crime genre also expanded. Like I said earlier, I think the demand was always there. And with the advent of cheap printing, the supply was just catching up. But why is true crime so popular, especially now? Because it seems like it's everywhere, right? With new Netflix documentaries being released weekly. There are many explanations, and over the years I have researched why so many people are drawn to these horrific stories. And there are a whole lot of reasons, you know? Exposure, accessibility, and voyeurism, of course, play their roles. But I think that's um, too easy explanation. And from my experience, the audience is as diverse as it comes. People in law enforcement, detective work, forensics, they're interested in their stories as is their job. Uh, people fascinated by human mind and psychology want to gain insight into criminal behavior. And there are people who are interested in the justice system and how it treats both victims and criminals. Some were affected by crimes and they found a bit of calmness uh, knowing that they were not alone, especially when others share their stories of survival. But one of the reasons I think is particularly strong um, is also the structures of our societies. In most countries, uh, there's not only a rule of law, but also endless rules, customs, and limitations on what individuals can do. But some, some break these rules, and others move entirely to the other side, committing terrible acts. And it fascinates people in, you know, a macabre way. Individuals who turn the bucks on the society. <laughs> Alright, Bobby, let's show that clip one last time. <laughs> but Only Murders is not just a take on true crime. It focuses on true crime podcasting and how the medium entered the mainstream audience. Now, there were some true crime podcasts in uh, the early days, like the true crime podcast with Dan Zupanski from 2010, where he interviewed authors. The Generation Y released their first episode in 2012, Thinking Sideways started in 2013. But it wasn't until the incredible success of Serial in 2014 that grabbed the attention of truly global audience. And they presented an in-depth investigation into a single murder case. And from there, many shows started, with ours case file in January 2016. Now, according to Postchaser, there are over 23,000 true crime podcasts as of March 2024. It is the third most listened to podcast genre, with shows ranging from episodic, seasonal storytelling, interview style, investigative, and even comedic. Apparently, 84% of the US population over 13 watched or listened to some kind of true crime story, and 42% said they listened to a true crime podcast. And that's just the US. From my own observations, the genre is gaining traction in Eastern Europe, Asia, and Africa. And it doesn't look like the popularity will stop anytime soon. Steve Martin, as we established, was already a fan of true crime podcasting before Only Murders. He loves our show, Case File. And yes, I know I said it a hundred times already, but let me have it, okay? Just let me have it. Um, but it's safe to say that the success and popularity of podcasting influenced the overall story of his TV show. And the premise is so simple, yet so genius. Because they don't laugh at the true crime like American Vandal, but they created a comedy drama with an unusual trio that solved mysteries. They make fun of true crime podcasters, but not mocking the trope in your faces. It's based on the classic whodunit formula, but it's also an adult series that deals with serious issues. Yeah, it's a parody, but at the same time, a deep look into characters, personalities, and their neighbors' lives. Also, um, in later seasons, the element of the actual podcasting takes a bit of a backseat um, and we focus more 
on the relationship between the characters and to some degree the actual mysteries and crime, but it's also aren't always in the main frame. They show us uh, the romantic views of true crime podcasting and why treating it as entertainment is a question of ethics and values. You know, the disconnection between the victims of crimes and amateur detectives and people who treat these stories as just morbid content. You know, the fascination of murders and crimes, but as part of show business rather than real life. Only Murder uh, satirizes the obsession taking true crime podcasting under the microscope, but they do it with humor and uh, sort of coziness that only Steve Martin can bring. But I remember when season one came out and some true crime podcasters said that the show made them look bad. I don't think that was the aim, but it definitely prompts some self-reflection. At the time of writing this video, I have watched all four seasons of the show and was never disappointed, not even once. You know, the cinematography captures the architecture of the Arconia building while keeping the show fresh and funny. The music by Siddhartha Kosla fits perfectly with Hollywood-like tunes, comedy crime, drama cues, tensions and melancholy piano. It's simple, it's catchy and it works. Of course, the most essential part of our trio success is the writing and the chemistry. It's snappy, it's funny and cringy, but in a good way, you know? It, there are jokes about Steve Martin and Martin Short being old, but I think it's never overdone. Selena Gomez, is she's not just a young sidekick who crosses over uh, to the younger generation. And to me, it feels like real friendship. It's true, it's authentic, it's like the, like that in real life, you know, it's believable. And of course, there are many shouts to Hollywood's glory past, but not in a style of like La La Land, a blatant pandering to win an Oscar. Only Murder never takes itself too seriously, making jokes about business of the show business, but in a clever way. And you know, it's funny, because it takes the piss out of Hollywood pomp and shallowness. It's kind of incredible that Steve Martin and Martin Short created something so fresh, so modern, so funny and entertaining so late in, the, in their careers. I hope they'll continue doing it as long as they want. When I look at Wikipedia, it says that Steve Martin came up with the idea 10 years before the premiere of Only Murders. But it was slightly different. It was about three old men solving crimes together in a building. There was no mention of podcasting. And obviously, as time went on, the premise changed. They, they added Selena Gomez and turned them into true crime podcasters, which fit the zeitgeist. Now, as I watch and enjoy the series, I think back to Steve Martin's comments that he's a fan of our show. I want to believe that Case File inspired him to develop only murders in a building into what it is now. Who knows? It's possible. It's possible. A boy can dream, right? Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. God, do we have fans? Oh, thank God we have fans. Where's the new episode? Shouldn't you be recording? Yeah, we don't work for you, you vultures!